Welcome everyone, my name is Mark Lancaster and the video I'm providing today is a quick inventor tip that can be useful in different situations. So let's get started. Perhaps you've been tasked to mod an inventor model like this one and you're not the author of it or maybe it's been an extended period of time since you did create the model. Are you going to know how this model was constrained just by looking at it? What's the impact on the overall model if I change the form fit function of a component? Maybe I'm out changing or modifying the constraints. Or perhaps I just want a quick understanding of how this model was constrained based on a given component. Well, this quick tip will help you understand that. Actually, I'll be covering two helpful tips in this video. At this point, if I expand the assembly browser relationship folder, or go to a given component and expand it, you'll notice that there is no component names after the relationship, which kind of makes it hard to know at this point what the relationship that was created. Yes, I could select the relationship and see it on the screen. Or I can go into Tools, Application Options, and go to the Assembly tab and turn on Display Component Names after the Relationship Names. As you can see, now I can look and say, hey, for this given relationship, it's associated to this component and this component, which kind of makes it a little bit easier to understand that relationship. But it may not always be easy to decipher the relationship through the Assembly Model Browser, and this helpful tip will streamline that process. The first thing we need to do is to pick a component and tell Inventor we want to view or select the components that it's constrained to. Now, we could go to the Quick Access Toolbar and select our option through our selection priority list, but it's some additional mouse moves. So the very first helpful tip I'm going to share right now is we're going to hold down the Shift key and right mouse click to bring up the selection priority on the screen. From there, we are going to pick Constrain 2, and then we're going to pick our component on the model. So we're going to click this hand wheel here. And as you can see in the browser and also on the screen, it highlights the components that it's constrained to. I find this quick workflow as being useful in determining how the components that are constrained to this given component. I do not have to expand and look at any relationship. Hopefully the next time you have to investigate or troubleshoot a model, you will be able to use this quick tip to streamline that process. Until next time. Thank you.